Good morning. I normally do a really good job at staying emotionally detached from the news. I cover a lot of stuff, and I would imagine the amount of news that I cover, and for the period of time that I've covered it, it would probably wear on quite a few people. And for whatever reason, uh, I just automatically, I can report something, and it just doesn't have an emotional effect on me. However, there are most certainly stories that do. And I've got a story here out of St. Louis. It's a rather local story. And uh, I've got the same question that I've asked countless times here on this channel when I cover stories about this, because this involves the torturing of an infant child. I, uh, I ask many, many, many times, where's dad? Because I see all these crazy stories about things happening to children. And very, very, very rarely is dad ever even mentioned. We'll get to that a little bit more in a moment. But let me uh, bring you on over to the article. I'll leave a link, description, first comment as always. Headline is, he's just going to have to pay for his existence. Woman accused of child abuse after allegedly sending videos of herself torturing her infant. It's crazy. Kind of a short article. It says a woman is accused of child abuse after St. Louis police say they obtained text messages, she wrote, saying she would feel an ad adrenaline rush when torturing her infant. According to a probable cause statement, Emma Rigdon, 20, was at the 1200 block of Warren Avenue where she pinched and slapped the leg of her infant, causing him to cry. She then placed her hand over his nose and mouth, which made him struggle to breathe as he flailed his arms and legs. Police say she recorded what she was doing in a video and sent it to an acquaintance. A few minutes later, Rigdon allegedly took another video of herself, placing a blanket and hand over the infant's face, causing him to cry and grab vigorously at the blanket. She sent this video to the acquaintance as well. Police say they obtained text messages Rigdon sent, where she stated she felt happy when she did these things and that it gave her an adrenaline rush. The text messages read, I don't know when I do that, I feel happy like adrenaline rush. I be stopping right before he dies. Last time he was blue. I really want to kill him, but I don't want to go to jail, so it's unfortunate he's just going to have to pay for his existence. The video and text were seized as evidence in the investigation. She was denied bond and has a hearing set for May 21st. Uh, First Alert 4 will uh, update the story when they get more information. Where's dad? No mention dad. This is so disgusting. I would imagine dad was kicked to the curb long ago. Either that or he had to get away from that crazy woman. I can kind of claim both. <laughs> in, in my personal situation. Um, you know, absolutely my ex-wife took the government reward for kicking dad to the curb and at the same time the whole reason our whole relationship was a nightmare to begin with was because of how she const I mean it was like living with the enemy she was constantly scheming plotting and doing all kinds of stuff to cause problems and I never even got a chance to tell my side of it in the court Never. In fact, I've never gotten my chance to tell my side of it, period. Nobody that had actually seen what went on, were actual witnesses to what went on, have even been questioned. No, nope. but they did, by the way. They did take testimonies by people that hadn't even been around our family. I find that pretty interesting. I'm not trying to make this article about me what I'm trying to say is that there is a big issue here and it's an issue that's been taboo for a long time we have to stop that people have no idea 
how bad this war on fathers is. They really don't. The only ones that know are the men that are dealing with it. Because it's a taboo topic. We're not allowed to talk about it. If you mention it, well, you're just a bad guy. You're a bad guy. You're, you're accusing the victim. And all that rhetoric that they pull in order to shut down the conversation. People are people. It doesn't matter what gender, what race, what religion. They're good and bad and all. But when you cater to one side because of an agenda, which is absolutely what is going on here. Same thing's going on in so many other areas. Look at all the trans stuff. Look at the states that have put into laws saying that the parents don't even have to know about, you know, or be told about uh, transitioning and all of this kind of stuff. Craziness, right? Awful one-sided, right? This was the beginning of it. The fight against fathers in family courts was the beginning of it. Now, I don't know who the father was. The father may be worse than what she is. Or, the father may not be in the picture because she's whacked. Or, she took that government reward for kicking dad to the curb. Or possibly all of the above. I... We got to do something. That, that was one of the first steps that our government took in order to destroy this nation. Because the more families they break up, the more dependent they can get people on the government. And when people are dependent on the government, they'll bow to their will in order to be able to eat, in order to be able to have a roof over their heads. It was a game, it was a trick, it was a ploy, and it worked well. Now, mothers didn't have to take part in it, but it's free, yo, because the states provide all the legal assistance and everything else. The guy don't get shit. The guy's got to fend for himself 100%. However, the mother gets all this free stuff. All they have to do is kick dad to the curb. You see where that leads us. We can't change it until we start talking about it. We can't start talking about it until we stop making it taboo. Shalom.